Welcome to this video on using Microsoft Power BI. During this video, we're going to look at what Power BI is. We're going to look at how we can access Power BI, then an overview of the Power BI dashboard. We're then going to import some data and use that data to create a Power BI dashboard. So firstly, what is Power BI? Power BI is a powerful data visualization and analytics tool. As you can see from the image on the video at the moment, we've imported some data and we've created bar charts, graphs, spot diagrams from that data. We can use that then to actually analyze anything to do in this case with IT spend trends. To access Power BI, we can use the Power BI icon when we log into office.com. However, if this does not appear on your page, you can use a search bar in the top to type in Power BI and then this will allow you to use the icon to load the dashboard. Once in the dashboard, you can see here frequent and favorite dashboards that I've used and created so I can get to them quickly from the Power BI dashboard. You can also see down the left hand side the workspaces that I can use. So workspaces across the organization, my workspace, which is personal to me. And then this holds all of the reports and data sets that I've imported. To get to data, we actually use the get data button in the bottom left hand corner to import data from all sorts of sources. So let's take a closer look at the Power BI dashboard. As I said, the middle section is taken up by my favorites and frequents. On the left hand side, I have my workspaces. If I look at workspaces, I can see ones across the organization. All the my workspace is where I keep all of my data, so all of my reports. So let's look at getting some data. We have four options. The my organization brings in data that has been shared by other people around the business. Services allows you to access data from outside organizations and also data sources from within Microsoft. The databases option allows you to access data stored in SQL databases. These are normally based in Azure as this is a cloud service. The files option allows you to import files from local sources. You can also import from cloud sources such as OneDrive for Business, OneDrive Personal, SharePoint Team Sites, or what we are going to use, a local file. We're going to use an Excel spreadsheet. However, one thing we need to understand about importing data from an Excel spreadsheet is that the data within it has to be formatted as a table. So the first thing to do with any data that you've got in a spreadsheet is actually to select all of that data and then use the format as a table option. Here we can choose any type of color, it doesn't matter. Select OK for the range and then make sure that the actual file is saved. You also need to ensure that you've closed the file down before trying to import the data. So we're back at the import option and we're going to choose local file. Find the file that we want to import and then we have two options. The upload will just take the data and install it into Power BI so you can interact with it as if you're using Excel online. The import option will import the data and then we can use that data to actually create Power BI dashboards. Once I'm in here, you can see that all of the fields that I had and all of the data that was in the Excel spreadsheet. And then on this side, I have the visualizations that I can use. So I'm going to add a stacked bar chart. Now I need to add some data into here. So the values, I'm going to use the months. So all I need to do is click and drag the months into the actual value box. I can drag them in order if I want to, but once they are in, I can actually put them, drag them around to be in order. So there's all of my months inside my value box. It doesn't really tell me anything. The bar chart has no real um, source 
and has no real use as a visualization or data analytics tool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag the product over to the axes. This now breaks out those bar charts into the different ones for the different products that have been on sale. And the legend shows me the months. So I can quite easily see how many art pads were sold for each month. I'm now going to add a slicer. This allows me to actually slice the data using fields from the spreadsheet. I'm going to drag the product over to the field and that will complete the actual slicer data. Once there, I can then use those checkboxes to actually filter down the data. So I can do the notepad, for example, and anything else that I wish to. Once I've created my report, I may want to actually format it differently. So I have a format option for the actual bar chart. Click on the little paint symbol and then you can see all the odd options I have. So I can do things like turn the legend on or off. I can change the axes. If I go into the general, I can make the actual chart non-responsive. I can turn the title off to give a bit more screen estate to the actual bar chart. I can choose a background for the actual chart as well if I wanted to, if I didn't want the white background. One of the great options that I use quite a lot is the data labels option. If I turn that on, you'll see that the numbers appear above each bar chart. I can also change the color of those data labels. So now I don't actually need that Y axis anymore. I don't need to try and work across and work out what the height or the number is of each bar chart as the data label has been added. What I can do now is actually save the report. So click on the save button, give the report a name and then click save. This now saves the report and you can see on the left hand side it will appear underneath my reports option. If I go to the file option then, I have a number of other options where I can embed the actual report into SharePoint or into a website. The publish to web, please be careful as this actually publishes a public version of your chart. So we've saved the report, we can embed the report, but what if we actually want to share it? Any of these reports that I have in my workspace, I can share. So if we go back to the shop sales one, you'll see on the menu bar across the top, right on the right hand side is a share option. So if I click on the share option, I can then type in the name of the person I actually want to share the report with. I have a number of options then, so I can actually change some of these options. There's a report link that the user will get once I actually hit the share button. You can also at this point look at access. So you can see here at the moment, it's only the one user who has access to the report. Once I click the share button, that report will be sent to them by an email link and they will be able to open that report. Thank you for watching this overview of Microsoft Power BI. What you need to do next is log in. So go to office.imperial.ac.uk to log in with your credentials and then use the Power BI icon to access Microsoft Power BI. From there, you can upload an Excel spreadsheet and start to create some dashboards using that data. If you get stuck, you can look at the Office 365 support and training web pages or contact your Office 365 champion.